I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. The wave is forming. All right, we're good All to right. go. 99 episodes. Almost three Fucking years. Brent. Well, actually, three years this week. Three years this week? Three years this week. I'm oh, sure. man. Let me check real quick, but I'm like 90% sure it's been three years this week. Dang. Uh, did, oh, I shall consult the spreadsheet. Uh, 9-24-2018 is yeah. episode one. So it's going to be three days after this episode releases. Oh, well, happy no. anniversary to us. One, two, three, four days after this episode releases. I forgot today was the 19th. Yes, we be doing things on different days. Yeah. Different days be do done different things. Um we finally our website finally uh auto redirects you to HTTPS because I finally got around to doing it. Oh nice. I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, uh I I was looking at my website because I was doing I was writing something up because I have to I had to write like a letter of introduction for myself. Yeah. To somebody who I don't think I can talk about. Um for NDA purposes, I'm like fifty public. cookies in you. Sorry to cut you off. I just clicked on the the lock. <laughs> I mean, cookies and use is not that big of a deal. It's kind of just like you pick up cookies like sneezing on the internet. Yeah, I mean, it's what makes ads be directed towards me. It what it's what makes ads scary as shit. It is. It's it's also why I should. Uh, clear my cookies on my work computer because there I log in with my same Google account and then I'll be at home and I'll just get ads for things that have are only to do with my job. <laughs> you know, you can have like a separate like login for that for the job. Like you could use a different account for that. Yeah, but I'm not saying I'll do anything for the this at work ever but sometimes maybe i'll want to be able to access a copy or a spreadsheet related to this <laughs> and then yeah, i'll just stay logged on <laughs> god damn it, god damn it. <laughs> it's what i do i'm a little disappointed that my call to action didn't reach more people though i gotta say no no, we're still at 8,157 backers. We need 11,000, and they just announced the second tier, and it's a fucking stand. Oh, really you, mad. that call, I was, try, I was trying to th remember what that call to action was. Oh, you, you. Yeah, I still haven't received uh, the, the, the perfect grade in the mail either that I want. I know, it's, it's, it's really, really depressing. That was my call to action, yeah. So. so depressing. I'm so disappointed right now. <laughs> yes. we, I'm, we not, I'm not disappointed in you, guys. I'm disappointed in myself. I'm disappointed in you guys. Brandon, you're not supposed to say that. I am a every single one of you. Especially you, Devin. That's right. Devin Townsend. The it would be really weird if like, in the 300 people who listen to this podcast regularly, there was a Devin Townsend. The oh, like the, the, as in Devin Townsend from the Devin Townsend Project and Strapping Young Lad, and is he a real person? He's he's a very real person. Oh, he's like famous. Okay, he's a famous Canadian gar guitar player and songwriter. I mean, he's so very many... good. If you go listen to Devin Townsend, he does um cool things. Ah, oh, jeez. He's, he looks better now that he's bald because he used to have both dreadlocks and male pattern baldness, and that 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 was definitely a look that he had no, going that's, on. That's a look for sure. Um, so I started watching The Circle. I don't know if you've heard of oh it. Oh my! I'm all caught up with all seasons. 
Oh my god. So it's, please share your experience with me. It's uh, it's kind of a religious experience. Oh yeah. Is the best way I can describe it because So what like, what season did you start with? I started with season 2 cuz what happened was I fell asleep and Christina put on the circle season 2. I woke up to this this thing that was playing on the TV and it was just like oh no. Uh it was just like um it was like the sound of a million people screaming. Oh my. I like the circle so much and I, it's part of it's because it's how you know that we're in like a downward spiral as as, in, as a society. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Uh, I, Christina calls stuff like that trasher. Yeah, that's fair. Like, it's... I... There has never been a group of people who I hate more than the current season's roster of The Circle, is all I have to say. <laughs> Wait until you um, watch any of the other seasons. <laughs> so here's the thing. I watched season two as well. There was at least people I liked in season two. And in season yeah. one, season like so the ratio of people who are acceptable to terrible has been yeah. slowly moving towards the terrible side as every season p- passes. It basically. moves. It moves. For season two, River was like a really nice guy, or the guy playing River, spoiler alert, was a really nice guy. Well, that's not even a spoiler. They reveal that like the right first, immediately. Yeah. Right away, immediately. Like <laughs> yeah. as they introduce him that he was a catfish. Oh, yeah. so if you don't know, the whole idea of the circle is it's like a social network thing that's basically tailor made for COVID. Yeah. But it existed before COVID. So, you know. Yeah. Um You it's like ten ish I forget the exact number of people. Eight. Eight in completely different hotel rooms who never see each other and they make a fake social media profile that's on like a closed network that they mm-hmm. operate on, and that's the only way in which they can communicate. And let me just say there's some people who are thirsty as fuck. Fuck. There's always at least oh, one person yeah. a season who's just a thirst lord or queen. Oh, wait, does, just... is season two the one with Chloe? The uh... Yeah, Too Hot to yeah. Handle? Yeah, She's yeah, yeah. next level thirst. Yeah, like, there are people who go on the circle knowing that, I presume, there it takes course over, like, a week or and a half, maybe. It's like, it's like a week or two of filming, I'm assuming. Yeah. But there are people who go in, like, looking... They use the word love. Yeah. And they have, like... Like, they think they're making personal connections via... Not even... It's worse than just doing it via social media. It's a fake social media that they will never... Ex- yeah. And, like, it It explicitly... Like, the, the rules of the game explicitly allow you to be a catfish. Like... Yeah. If anything, it's almost encouraged to be a catfish. So, like, it's such a decision to do that. Oh, yeah. And, like, all I can say is... um. So, there's, there's one character in the new season who's described as having a high-calorie personality. And I've never heard that term before. But after watching the season, <laughs> I'm just like... It? <laughs> that dude is literally the definition of a high calorie personality. Yeah. Like that is the most appropriate thing you could say about him. He's not a bad dude. He's just he's a mood. Some of the stuff he does is very mood like. Yeah. Oh, you're, like, th- you're talking about the the kid. The kid, yeah. Daniel. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's a whole ass mood, but like I couldn't personally deal with him. No, no. He's if like if 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 someone cast the the like a transmorph spell on a squirrel and it backfired and the squirrel got turned into a human, I'd say like a squirrel mixed with a golden retriever. Yeah, but also oh, wait, like no, no, it had a lot of sugar at the time that it was transformed. Chihuahua, Chihuahua. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's like he it's like a, a human Chihuahua a little bit. Yeah, he's someone's spirit animal, but not mine. <laughs> uh, it, it's such a, like, 
it's such a show. Like, that's all I have to say is it's just... Yeah, and then, like, if you get voted as an influencer, then you can block people, which is, like, the survivor way of kicking people off the island. It's... It's... I don't recommend watching it and that being the only thing you watch. Like, I I recommend you having, like, a Switch or a game that you're playing while watching it because you'll go insane if you watch it just straight. But, like, as a background show that you, like, look up and are like, what the fuck just happened periodically? 10 out of 10. I hate to tell you, John, but the the circle is is Erica and I's uh, present... Um, let's make dinner and sit down and watch a show together show. Oh no, Brandon. <laughs> oh no, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon, what are you doing to yourself? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's because the Witcher doesn't come out until <laughs> November. Uh, the it's... Wheel of Time series doesn't come out until November. Oh, uh, the new season of You doesn't come out until November. So there's nothing but the circle for us. Uh, the circle is such a fucking event it is an event i can't get over it and i hate that i'm so addicted to it and i don't know why i I started watching it uh, at season one because i saw the trailer and i was like i hate that this exists and it is terrible i'm gonna watch the first few minutes and then like five episodes later i'm like what happened Pretty much, because it's 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 just such like a dumpster fire. It's like that scene from Community where like uh, everyone's like on fire. It's the darkest timeline scene from That's, Community, and there's the like circle fire. F- is darkest timeline, yeah, yeah. It's it's basically darkest timeline existence, and like I can't look away. No, but Brandon, That's the problem. It's uh, if if you if you this isn't the Netflix review show. This is Cryptopedia, an exploration yeah. to the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Where each week we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the parano- paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and I'm pretending to be nothing. You're pretending to be that either has no meaning or is very deep. <laughs> I'm pretending to be myself. Oh, gotcha. Um, so this week That's actually uh, kinda true, actually. Everyone's pretending to be the the a version of themselves. Well there's um, there's the whole notion of the front stage, backstage, uh what is it? Manlow stages, I forget the name. KP mentioned it a little while ago. Um but there's that whole notion that like our personalities is a fully performative thing and like we have two personalities that exist, um, the one that is for society and the one that is for us. But I would say there's three, because even if I'm home alone, like there was like me just doing things, but then there'll be like, I'll do stuff just for me that isn't like what not like like performing for the self almost mm-hmm. to some extent. That's fair. I mean, like that's that's kind of the way our reality works. It's. It's interesting because we're highly social creatures, but regardless, let's get back to the get back to the Gorbel's vampire. The Gorbel's That's what vampire. we're doing this week. Yes, Gorbel's vampire. So I want and I want to point out it is Gorbel's G O R B A L S. It is not, not the a Gorbel's vampire. Yeah. This it's, that is a very different thing. It is a not a mispronunciation <laughs> of that guy. No, 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 no. It is the Gorbel's vampire. Um. Which uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do. We'll do some covering of some stuff, right? So on September twenty third, nineteen fifty four, police in Glasgow received a call at the Southern Necropolis. All right, so we're talking about Gorbals in Glasgow, Scotland. Yeah. Can I can I just say that Necropolis is one of my favorite words in existence? It's such a cool like, word. It's honestly my favorite word. Like. A hundred percent my favorite word. I don't know why exactly, but there's something there's something like phenomenal about the notion of necropolis. Like there's so, a necropolis in Poughkeepsie. Yeah, like there there's if you're talking about scene setting or like trying to set a mental image, no single word can set 
a scene to the extent that just saying Necropolis can. Like, it, as soon as you say that, you, you've got a picture in your head already. You don't really need to describe a whole I lot more. I can't really argue that. Yeah, He's so... A fact. A Necropolis is a huge cemetery, and the one we're talking about was constructed in Gorbals in 1840 on the site of a hospital that mainly treated leprosy. At the time, it was one of the poor areas of Glasgow, a slum that housed 90,000 poor workers. Um, hundreds uh, would share one tap for water, ten uh, to a room for sleep, and the air was so thick that it would literally block the sun from visibility. Uh the necropolis itself was to provide affordable burials to the workers, and 115 years later, it would be ground zero for one of the most unique vampire events recorded. Uh, huh. So, what? Huh. I mean, Glasgow sounds miserable. It sounds. It sounds like At least... that's that's what we want for the work for, like. Did you, oh my god, did you see the post about Amazon literally talking about making Amazon towns? Yeah, I was like, oh, it's a good thing I never read about any of that in history books before. Oh my god, I can't. Existence is pain. But let's, <laughs> Existence let's get, is pain. Like, let's get to. <laughs> I can totally picture, like, the fact, like, workers in a factory town getting essentially like, a renewable gift card or, like, a factory credit card where you can go to the warehouse and redeem... Like, that's... The, it's, the, it's the factory... Ta it's happening all over again, John. Bezos. Jeffrey Bezos. Yeah. Come on, Jeffrey. You can do it. That... Uh, talk about a dick and a dick. Um, that is referencing him being shot into space in a flying penis. Anyway... So the police That's constable, fair. Alex Deeperos, was the first to arrive on scene. Uh, he said, uh, what he saw, I imagine, was a fairly unique sight in that he saw hundreds of children who were hunting for something all over the wait, necropolis. Wait, let me let me just, like, stop you for a second. Yeah? Um. Okay. <laughs> he was, was he called there because there were children roaming about? Yes, so so the police were called because there were hundreds of children storming the necropolis. Okay, okay, sorry. I just needed to make sure. <coughs> yeah. Um that oh, yeah. sounds like hell. It it sounds terrible. There there's a there's a photograph of it. So there's a a, a screenshot I took of uh the the Daily Mirror um entitled An Amazing Scene as Hundreds of Children Rush Cemetery and there's a picture of hundreds of Hundred, children like, literally in literally just that. Cemetery. That is yeah. That is what it is. Yeah. The oldest was 14, and the youngest could, quote, barely even toddle. All the children were carrying everything from crucifixes to knives, staves, and axes. Uh, <laughs> this, by the way, my, my, my personal worst nightmare. Uh, they were scouring the mass cemetery, looking around uh, gravestones, searching trees, and navigating the Victorian tombs. The scene was described as, quote, apocalyptic, apocalyptic uh, that being enhanced by the steel mill at the far end of the cemetery, filling the e area with smoke and illuminating it with flames, filling the air with the smell of sulfur. Um, oh, but Jesus. For, for, for the sake of drama, we'll call it brimstone. Because that's what the Bible calls sulfur. Um, children would call out, there he is. And then groups of armed children would charge in the direction. A child would shout elsewhere. And then another group of armed children would would go rush off. I'm getting 2016 flashbacks. I'm not going to lie. 2016 flashbacks? For, for like when um, people were playing Pokemon Go that first summer. And like oh, somebody would yeah. scream about, "There's a Charizard over here!" And then yeah, everyone yeah. fucking ran. That, that's the vibe I'm getting off of this. This is just, this is just, um, this is just 1800s Pokemon Go, is what you're telling. Me. It's exactly 1800s Pokemon Go, except with mm -hmm. knives. Um, Deep Rose was able to question some kids about what the fuck was happening, and Brandon, they told I him, am, "I am literally, <laughs> I am literally, uh, uh, like." I am what you would call a domain expert on Pokemon Go, and I'm just going to say, that's basically Pokemon Go today. That's 
of anyone Pokemon qualified Go to Pokemon say that. Pokemon Go with knives. You are, you are up there. <laughs> Uh, so he he questioned the kids about what the hell is going on, and they told him that they were hunting the Garble's vampire. They told him a seven-foot-tall vampire with metal teeth had eaten two boys, and that he was hiding somewhere in the graveyard. Metal teeth? Metal teeth. Vampire with this, metal teeth. Is this, uh, what's his name from, uh, James Bond? Jaws? Uh, That's right. They yeah. found Jaws. No, because he was, he was, Jaws was, the, the actor's French, not Scottish. Ah, fair enough. Uh, The boys want to explain that they had begun to hear rumors around town on the school playground regarding a beastly looming figure with iron teeth who is preying upon their peers. Furthermore, this controversial report indicated that this infernal creature had made a home at the southern necropolis near the old steelworks. Tam Smith, now in his 60s, remembered uh, when he first heard the tale. And and there, there is a video interview with some of these kids... Much Wait. later, uh, oh, when in they're life. older. Well, they're yeah, older. when they're older. Okay. Um, so and he prob- said, seventies, mm, eighties, maybe. Yeah, he he's up there. I think he's in his six. Uh, this one guy, he was one of the younger ones, I think, when it was going on. Okay. Um, he said, "Oh, he said I was about seven at the time. I was a cup co- with a couple of my friends in the station cafe on Bridge Street, uh, and my aunt Sadie was playing the jukebox." Then someone came in and said, there's a vampire in the graveyard. Uh, the red light and the smoke, and this is again from the steelworks, at the end of the cemetery. This is really a set scene, but a necropolis with just a huge industrial factory at the end is a scene. Like, this is something that would be in, um, uh, uh, like, World of Warcraft or Elder Scrolls Online. Like, this is a zone in an MMO. Honestly, um, like it's kind of a perfect encapsulation of capitalism. Like it's visually oh, it's absolutely, speaking, visually the, speaking, it is like the definition of capitalism. It is so. It's the f- <laughs> the necropolis was built so that <laughs> the workers would have a cheap way to bury themselves because they're working in the factory <laughs> that's next to it. Like. It's it, like this is the direction everybody wants to go. Um, I mean, it's no different. It's 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 it's. Hey, listen. At least they were honest about it. At least they were honest about it. Um. So he, he was saying that the the fire from the steelworks would flare up and make the shadows of the gravestones leap around, and they could see figures walking uh, at the back, all lined in red light. Um, and the scare yeah? went on for hours. Yeah, so he's just, like, yeah? really setting the scene. This uh, is, like, legitimately apocalyptic. Yeah. What you're describing. Oh, yeah. Like... It's fucking great. Horrifying. Uh, this is I s- horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw an interview with a now older man named Kenny Hughes who said, I don't know... Uh, it was called a vampire. We were told, uh, picked out in school and told it was the man with the iron teeth. Um, and uh, he made a bunch of Scottish sounds. Um, like, just imagine Scott, Scott, old Scottish man grumbles and sounds. Um, big fangs. So, so I was typing out what he was saying, it, 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 like, trying to transcribe it. He, whoo, oh. of, of the thick accents, there you go. Um... I, Brandon, I'm sorry, yeah. I just realized, I just realized it's 1954 and not 1800s. The 1800s? No, no, so the okay. necropolis, it's, the, now, the necropolis was built in the 1800s, and, okay. and now we're talking okay. about a, a, a late, later, well, so I was just going so, to, like, the history of the, the well, Samurai, Brandon, sorry. I just want to tell you, I'm thinking this, and then I see a man in, pic- like, full color, right? And oh, like, you're like, wow, that's a really good quality camera for the 1800s. Yeah, and then I'm like, huh. And then I look down again and I see the the picture that you've got here where there's a kid literally leapfrogging over a grave and they're all in like 50s clothes. And I'm like, huh. And then I made the connection, you see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I felt dumb as shit. <laughs> uh, that's fine. I mean, at least yeah. now we're all on the same page, which is three if you're reading along with us. Um, I don't uh, know pages. Yeah. 
Um, and the fangs he described, he said, you know, that come down like a walrus or something like this. And he's Wait. taken, he's kidnapped two boys, and then he makes more Scottish sounds. Um, is, is there just like a walrus walking around town? Is that what I'm hearing? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not Nosferatu because he had vampire buck teeth, but like imagine vampire fangs, but they're iron and as long as a walrus. <laughs> That's a thing you just described to me, and I don't it's, know how I feel about it. It's a thing. Uh, he said, this guy's living out of the gravy, which I presume is Scottish for graveyard. Um, the gravy. He's living out of... He just emerges from, like, some old country-style gravy. Just, like, the white <laughs> gravy slowly sloughs off his face. <laughs> He's like... What, we, what they, they don't tell you is that at that time... Um, they were putting, um, uh, 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 oxy into the gravy. So it was literally a man running around just chugging gravy, screaming, I want the gravy, drooling down his chin. That's really what was scaring the kids. I uh, want gravy. <laughs> I, I want gravy. I was perfectly happy not remembering that song existed. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> Is he alive still? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what's going on with Aaron Carter. He Well, he's got face tattoos now, so he's got that going for him. <laughs> he's... He's... Uh, Wait, there, was a, there was a Bow Wow version of that song? A Bow Wow that, Wow version? Yeah. Wait, is it the same song, or is it a different song? I don't know. Wait. I'm I'm checking. This this is something I need to find out for science. <laughs> he's he's yeah. I want candy guys not doing so great. Um, <laughs> it is, so, it is. It was a cover. He did, Aaron Carter really? did a cover. Yes. Wait, it was a Bow Wow song first. It was a Bow Wow Wow song at at the yeah. time. A little Bow Wow 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 Wow. No, not little Bow Wow. Bow Wow Wow. Oh, wait, bow, there's a bow wow wow? There's a bow wow wow. Okay. What is happening? Hey, what um, the hell? I want candy by bow wow wow. Come there's on. There's literally only a paragraph in two refrains in the entire song. What is happening? Oh, and they're good. There's a kid's bop of it, too. Oh, of course there's a kid's bop. There's, I want there to be a kid's bop of just, like, <laughs> of, t like, Tyga songs. That'd be funny as hell. Brandon, they did a kid's bop song of Candy Shop. What? So, like, yeah. Oh, God. Have All you right. not heard that? No. Th that exists. L the, like, l like, take you to the candy shop. Like that? I'll let you lick the lollipop. Yeah. <laughs> well, they thought it was normal candy. Um, it, it was. It was like a literal. Uh, I'm like ninety percent. Wait, was it real or is it fake? Nope, it's uh, real. It's real. No. It's real. It's real. It's real. I'm pretty sure. One second. Oh, great. One second. I need to check this out because now, now I'm trying to remember if I remembered something. Okay, I might have remembered it wrong. Maybe Candy <laughs> Shop didn't get a kids' pop version. Um, it's Oh. Uh, Disturbia got um, a kid's bop version. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> what is happening? All right, we've got that in the circle. We're doing great. Bum, bum, beat them, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, s something to keep in mind is that during this time, there were no public recreation areas like parks or playgrounds. So That's large cemeteries were used as the play space for children, which, <laughs> cool. Um, Sounds right. Ken Kenny said that he, quote, wasn't scared because I wasn't really sure what was going to go on. I got more frightened when we got up there because I thought this could be real, especially because, you know, the older ones with weapons and stuff like that <laughs> thought something was going on there. This could be serious. I mean, <laughs> listen, you, even if a kid doesn't have a weapon, they've got a weapon. They're all arm arm the children, is what I say. Oh uh, yes, give them blow darts. Uh, blow darts. 
Uh, and um, make sure so they know I, not to breathe in first before they blow. I I want to stop for a second and go back. What to to the photograph of a kid leapfrogging uh, over a tombstone? No, I I went through more kids' bop songs, Brandon. Oh no! <laughs> I'm real by Jennifer Lopez, and the kids pretend to be Ja Rule in it, like sound <laughs> like Ja Rule. <laughs> oh. What Fantastic. is happening? What has happened to this world? <laughs> you know what the worst part is? That's like closer to when we were kids too, if my me- if I'm thinking correctly. That the thing the the thing that I I liked the least about um record stores was walking down the aisles and you'd see a considerable chunk devoted explicitly to kids bop and wow that's what I call music. And that, oh boy, for those oh, this, things. <laughs> this album had kryptonite on it. Like three doors <laughs> down. What, like, someone literally found a way to mark it, like, I'm going to make a worse version of a song. And then, like, that. that's all they, it's not even like, I just don't, I don't it's get. It's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah. What did they, okay. All right, well, all and right, then here's right. the other question: Is what did the kid do? The, do the kids get the royalties? Brandon, the literal third line of I I know this is like a total departure, but like yeah, I have to talk about this. Bring it on! The literal second line of "I'm Real" by Jennifer Lopez. What's my motherfucking name? R U L E. Blowing this Mary Jane, I'm analyzing the game. How do you... I suspect they didn't say that. And the game done choose me to bring pain to pussy and pussy hoes. They won in the same. (laughs) (laughs) How how do you change this? I really hope they didn't. And that's (laughs) just what's on the kids bop version. I really, really hope they just kept that in. How is this a real thing? <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that we're talking about Gorbel's vampire, but like, Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> the, <laughs> you. <laughs> for those listening, John's jaw has actually dropped. Oh, and he's listening to music. <laughs> He's doing I the just... DJ, one hand on the ear thing. <laughs> Are you trying to find out what they're saying? Yeah, yeah. Just give me. A... They did mention Mary Jane though explicitly. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, oh, it's. Oh, he looks stressed. <laughs> he he looks they very still stressed. Use the word sexy. Two. That's not that that they're going. They're trying to find a line to go up to. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. I'm confused. I don't hear kids singing. Is it just is kids pop now just at covers by adults? Oh, here it is. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I think the kids are just literally saying because I'm real, uh... and the rest of it's. I don't know. I don't know. Oh god. <laughs> I need to I need to like remove myself from this because like this is my day now. That's good. You ruined your own day. I did. I did. Sorry. Let's so Kids they Pop were will do that around. too. So they're fucking around in the graveyard. There's a kid leapfrogging over a grave. There's another kid standing on top of a grave, which I don't personally understand why that's disrespectful, but I'm also me. Um, but as far as I'm, sh- as far as I know, these are all very disrespectful things to be doing in a graveyard that is filled with dead factory workers. There's all who probably yeah. died because of the fact that the factories were so shitty. Yeah. Although, if you are going to be killed by a child with a knife in a graveyard, at least like, let's let, you're already where you're going to end up. I mean, they don't have to move the body or anything. I mean, that's listen, like. I feel like if you're gonna get killed by a child, 
which I believe will happen to me one day. Um, I feel like getting killed by a child in a graveyard is not the worst way to get killed by a child. No, there's I'm sure there's worse ways. There's so uh, many worse ways. <laughs> So the the interview also had a man named Tommy Smith on it. Uh, he describes his experience uh, peering around and climbing trees, the shadows being cast and hearing children call out and charging this way and that. Um, he had constructed his own weapon made of wood that he had hammered together with a brick to make what he described as a Tommy Hawk. <laughs> okay. So he might be mispronouncing Tomahawk. But also, he might be calling it a Tommy Hawk on purpose. That's the and best part. I don't know which of those realities is better for me. Uh, I prefer the reality in which he names weapons after himself. So this is my Tommy Hawk, and this is uh, my Smith Grenade. Yeah, t- Tommy Hawk, my Tommy Gun. I only I only own weapons that have. S- T O M in the in the name. That's it. And he has a Thompson machine gun too. My my uh my atomy my atomy bomb. Is a Tommy bomb, yeah. Uh R- Rami Sanderson, uh former eight year old student and vampire stalker, admitted that he engaged in the vampire's pursuit and he wasn't even fully aware of what they were supposedly tracking, uh saying, quote, uh, I didn't even know what a vampire was, but the story had spread through the school that afternoon. It all started in the playground. The word was there was a vampire, and everyone was going out to head, uh, head over there after school. At 3 o'clock, the school emptied, and everyone made a beeline for it. We sat there for ages, all just waiting and waiting. Um, so he said that uh, I wouldn't go in because it was a bit scary for me. I think somebody saw someone wandering about, and the cry went up. There's what a, a vampire. What a what a what a, what a bitch. The <laughs> only reason I say that is because a seven year old wa- went in there and he was. And he's like, eight. All that's for basically it. He like. Eight. That's an, basically a, an adult in eight, 1984. Actually, in 1984, you are an adult. Um, that was it. The word uh, got off and it went off the wall quick, um, and we would scatter. I remember ch- scampering home to my mother, uh, and she, who apparently said, "What's the matter with you?" I've seen a vampire, and I got a clout round the ear for my trouble. <laughs> so his mom's like, what the fuck happened? And he went, I saw a vampire. And she just slapped, up. slapped him upside the head. <laughs> He's like, fuck your vampire. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so Deep Road tried to get the over 200 children to leave, and they just ignored him and kept on the hunt because kids are like cats. Uh, he called Pretty for much. backup. And after even more officers arrived on the scene, the children continued to ignore the cops. These kids only left after the headmaster, or principal, if we're in the U.S., showed up, and then they all dispersed. See, the thing is, they they finally, they, like, had an inkling of what the power of collectivism was for a second. And then they fell for the the oldest trick in the book, where the boss shows up, and then you're like, the oh, oldest no, I'm trick. Be in trouble. They, these these kids were all fucked the police up until the principal showed up, and then they were like, oh shit, oh shit, someone with real authorities here. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, I don't mind jail, but lunch detention, no shit. That's gonna go on my permanent record, man. <laughs> oh, the permanent li- the the. The amount of time I thought that permanent records were real was ridiculous. It was, well, it was a convenient myth. It's a very convenient myth. Also, um, pool water turning purple when you pee. That's also a myth that I, I had to, I had to be like young, maybe six or seven. Cause that was even in like cartoons and I like I kept hearing about that. I remember summer camp counselors would be saying stuff like that. And I, after I was like, "That sounds kind of as a child that sounded ridiculous." So I intentionally peed in a public pool just to test it out, like just a little bit. And then I was like, "This isn't real at all. You can just pee in the pools." I didn't. I did it just the once to test as a kid because uh, well, I had a, a hypothesis. A, you're, you're only I'm, partially a monster. Yeah, I'm only partially a monster. I still got to pee every time after that, but I just did a full piss just to test their uh to see if they were lying to me and found out they were their plan backfired they caused if i if they never said that to me i would have never taken a full piss well yeah because like who would do that 
fucking um, sociopaths. Yeah. There's just a, a curious kid. I'm not a sociopath. Anyway, it wasn't long No, before. I mean, you, Brandon, you were trying to test a hypothesis. I'm talking about people who would willingly pee in the pool. Oh, yeah. There, I don't know. Like, I know like, there were kids that did that because they would just tell you. But uh, they're, they're monsters. Yeah, those those are the ones you got to watch out for. There's any any pool with people under the age of like 15 is half piss. And that's just something we have to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. Uh, So this horde of Van Helsing's continued to hunt, however, uh, night after night. It wasn't long before the rumors of the so-called Iron Man or Gorbel's vampire began to spread into the neighborhood wards of the city, causing panic even among the parents, many of whom implored... Yes? So did they catch him, like, drinking and eating, like, um... Like, uh, like some burgers in, like, a donut. The, the, the man, the, the Gorbel's vampire. Is that why they're calling him Iron Man? Because, because he was, he was bad jokes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> was Iron Man out yet? Uh. Not the movie, obviously, but the No, comic. the comic book. I don't know when the first Iron Man comic came out. Keep going. I'm going to figure this out. Sure. Iron Man issue one. Um. So anyway, rumors spread and it caused panic even among the parents, many of whom implored Officer Deep Rose for assurances that there was no substance to the story of a child-eating monstrosity in their mists. Uh, so- I almost can guarantee that in Glasgow 1954, there was in fact a child-eating monstrosity in their midst. There were. <laughs> yeah. Like, it- I, I, it wasn't the Gorbel's vampire, but like... Free market. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it was the free market. Um, soon after the newspapers got wind of the whole affair, um, that was when the public frenzy truly kicked into overdrive as each retelling of the Iron Man story became a more uh, elaborate and horrific. Um, an elderly lady with frizzy hair was even implicated in the scene. She was nicknamed Tin Lizzie and uh, not, not the Boys Are Back in Town band. Um, she was known oh, to carry a basket time. filled with cats around the cemetery, and they began to speculate that she must somehow be in league with the vampire. So, I want to point out that, like, um, she's basically the, 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 the definition of, um, He's he's basically the definition. She's basically the definition of a crazy cat lady. She's the crazy cat lady, and if it was not too f- farther in the past, she'd be like burned as a witch because they'd be like, "Look at her! She's carrying her familiars in a basket and wandering a cemetery." Like they, yeah, she would be burned as a witch. Um, I want to point out, Brandon. I was only two years off from my assumption. Oh, nice. <laughs> there was a serial killer active in Glasgow. In 1956. Oh, and he killed people. He killed people ra- aging, range, range in age from 10 to 45. So That's a swing for you. That's a yes. large, because th- th- a big age, because don't a lot of the times they tend to like f- be similar in description. Like, Well, it's the, the whole modus operandi thing. Yeah, um, victim. So for depends. like such a huge range of age. That that it, depends. It, this yeah. is not a true crime true crime podcast, but there are there are some people who buck the norm, um, like the guy who's on the most recent uh, uh, most recent last podcast on the left. He did a pretty wide range. Oh, okay. Um, so crowds uh, had begun to gather of adults at the gates of the cemetery, again ignoring police orders to disperse until for some reason a headmaster came out and convinced them to leave. So even the I mean, adults are like, don't, I they gotta... only listen to the principal. <laughs> well, because the principal's the only one who can have like a real impact on their life, right? Like, yeah. he's the only one who can really fuck shit up for them. Yeah. The rest of them they don't give a shit about, because like, what are you gonna do? ground me i'm just gonna fucking get out of the house yeah true oh you're gonna you're gonna arrest me i'm a child (laughs) my wrists are too small for your handcuffs anyway i'll just slip out pretty much i mean that's that's the real that's the real danger of children they're they know they know no fear authority means nothing to them unless it's a principal and if they just kill the principal it's like all over we can't do anything about them they're unstoppable (laughs) 
It's just picturing a group of kids kills a principal and takes over the school, and all the police are like, "We're, we're they're a sovereign nation now. There's nothing we can do." They just, they just. This is their, <laughs> this is their land now. Yeah, this is Tommy Topia. Yeah, it's Tommy Topia. To- Tommy's running around with his Tommy Hawk. <laughs> like that's how he how he was elected to be the president. <laughs> I mean, it's really just the kid who has the coolest thing. I mean, that's like the whole plot of uh of what you call it, Lord of the Flies. It's the cool with the cool success kid with the cool accessory. Yeah, that's how it goes. Oh man, if only Piggy had a Zune. Um. <laughs> Why? Conk shell my ass. Here's an iPod shuffle. <laughs> I thought, oh, they need earbuds though. They, uh, he he who has the earbud, but earbud. He who owns the AirPods controls the children. Oh, um, AirPods would not work with an I- iPod shuffle. No. Uh, <laughs> police at the time insisted there were no reports of any missing children, and that no names had come forward or even people related to the alleged victims. Uh, people were feverishly searching for anything to blame this whole event on, and it wasn't too long until they turned their heads to American media, specifically uh, American <laughs> horror comic books like Tales from the Crypt. One issue became prevalent, issue oh. 15 of Dark Mysteries, which dropped on December 15th, and this comic uh, is largely blamed for the stint. Oh uh, no! Is this like is this like one of the the things that contributed to the fucking comic code that basically ruined comics for a while? Um, we'll talk more possibly. Oh uh, god! The the, uh, the uh the issue itself was called the Vampire with the Iron Teeth, um, which you can see why people would possibly connect those dots. However, comic books as a whole were under attack. Uh, this was sort of a satanic panic, but instead of Dungeons and Dragons. It was comic books. I mean, uh, this pi- is just this is just the satanic panic after pinball machines were targeted, basically. Yeah, after pinball machines were targeted mm-hmm. for ah, uh, there's a. I want to go off on a nerd tangent, but I'm going to be responsible and and restrain myself. See, the real problem though isn't isn't comics or Dungeons and Dragons. It's flossing. It's and flossing. not flossing. Flossing. The, da- the dance. Oh, move. there was a lot of flossing yesterday. I'm sorry. The dance move. It was a thing. Uh, Parents, teachers, religious leaders, and politicians banded together to make the sale of these comic books illegal. It made it all the way to Parliament uh, and was pushed by uh, then-Parliament MP uh, for Gorbel's Alice Cullen. Uh, There were newspapers being published called, Is This the Kind of Comic You Want Your Child Reading? I've got some screenshots there for you. Um... Their efforts were successful, as in 1955, the Children and Young Persons Harmful Publications Act was passed, uh, and this restricted the print, publication, sale, and distribution of comic books, which featured crime, violence, cruelty, and incidents of repulsive behavior, which is a blanket for any. You could literally yeah, it's anything. You- you could you ban could any liter- comic I- for anything. <laughs> I was literally about to say that is such a broad like identifier there, like. Oh yeah, you could drive. You could drive a Mack truck through that particular classifier. There's in the nineteen, yeah, in the nineteen fifties, like that could also include like a comic book in which like a a woman like votes. <laughs> like, she works out of the house. Yeah, like she she has a job or votes would would also be under that same blanket. Oh, she wears pants. Yeah. Mm. There's s- some people are debauchery sh- sharing the same water fountains. Um, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like this is that time Kinda. period. Kind of, yeah. That's that's. <laughs> I mean, I mean the the interracial kiss on Star Trek a couple years after this is not. It's not that far off, and it was a huge deal. It's a huge deal, and also, uh, Uhura, the actress, at that time, w- was not allowed in the United States to open a bank account. <laughs> you, women of color couldn't open bank accounts in their own oh, name. They needed yeah, a man yeah, yeah. to uh, uh, open it for them. <clears throat> anyway, uh, however, now adults who are children at the time 
didn't think this has anything to do with it. Many, like Kenny and Tommy from earlier, had no idea what a vampire was and had never even seen any of these American comic books. That's unsurprising so again, to me. All the things they're banning, these kids never even heard of them. Um, That's pretty much all the things that ever get banned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, peop- the people who ne- who they're afraid of finding out about the thing never or knowing about the thing are never the people who know or find out about the thing. It's just a bunch of busybodies who don't understand the concept of art. Yeah. Or, like, they don't understand the concept of imagination and entertainment <laughs> to, like, a large Which is extent. Funny. Which is yeah. funny considering they probably have some of the best imaginations out of, like, most people. Yeah, because that lead poisoning really lets your brain go places. Um, and they're t- in Glasgow right now, so like it's like <laughs> primo lead poisoning right now. Oh yeah, that's all I'm gonna it's, say. It's in the air. Uh, Tommy, who was asked what he thought about uh, what he thought a vampire was at the time, and was asked for a description, said, um, "People at the graveyard, people were saying it's green in different things. I mean, you're trying to picture this in your head. So like, they thought vampire. Th- th- they're c- what they thought a vampire was, because they've never even heard of one before, completely different than the vampires of, like, the comic books that were, like, it, it, they're just not a thing. It's basically, it's basically like an alien or, like, a zombie is what he's describing. If anything, yeah. a, a zombie might be more appropriate for what they're discussing. Oh, d- most definitely. Um, I believe Kenny and Tommy, and I find it reasonable that children aged 4 to 14 in the area... Uh, in Scotland, uh, at the time, may not have had access to imported American comic books. Like that is totally plausible that they this did, much, they had no influence on them whatsoever. Uh, much less tales from the crypt. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a like weird one that I don't expect to have actually made it across the. Bottom. No, um, I gotta say. Yeah, like, they they have no recreation space and no uh, access to TikTok. I would say this is uh, to be as expected as our school having big lightsaber battles during the lunch period. Um, (laughs) You know how... Oh, okay. You're you're about to mention it. Oh. um, However, while in uh, in line to banning of lightsabers in our student handbook is more reasonably correlated than banning comic books in Scotland. (laughs) I I feel like I've mentioned this before on the podcast, but do you know how mad I was when they banned lightsabers? Because I had just gotten my fucking lightsaber. Yeah, like that... (sighs) I mean, that, that, that time period really let you, like... You knew the quality of various lightsabers, and you had to know, like, which ones, when contacting another lightsaber, wouldn't just buckle in half. Like, there is a Hon- whole a whole thing. Honestly, like, the Yoda hilt, right? The, like, it's got the, like, little, like, protrusions at the bottom, and then it's smooth up the entire hilt, Yeah, basically. That was the one. That was the come up. That, oh... Like true, Luke Luke Skywalker as a handle was terrible. The my uh, um, my Kylo Actually, Ren lightsaber would have been perfect for then because it's oh, much it's thicker great. walled plastic, and the hilt would actually protect your knuckles from other lightsabers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, no, the people gave him a lot of shit for having the cross guard, like Kylo Ren, some shit for that in the cross guard. Makes total sense. It makes li- li- you and I are veterans. We've been in the mm-hmm. shit. We've we've seen we've seen some stuff. Kylo Ren had a good idea. He had a good idea. He was a part of it. He was in the he was in it. Better yeah. than better than uh what's her name's um Ren? Is it Ren? It's not Ren. The lady a, Lady Jedi? Is it Ren? What was the lady I can't I remember. From her the name from the time. last from like the new from the new trilogies? Yeah. Is her name not Ren? I don't. Is it? What's sec- One sec. One second. Or am I just one is second? It Kylo Ren. All right. I, I think it's I, Kylo Ren. we I Episode feel like we're making a lot of people angry. <laughs> nine. Listen, I love these Ray. Ray. Yep. 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 So so Ray's got that double lightsaber that turns into a mace. Uh, that turns into a fucking Darth Maul lightsaber, which made no goddamn sense to me. Yeah. There's, uh, I don't know, Darth Maul. They, uh, never mind. I'm not going to start asking Star Wars questions. 
Darth um, Maul's Darth Maul's lightsaber was very impractical, but I always wanted to have one. Yeah, well, because then you'd have one, but it could turn into two, and really, that's where its value came in. Mm-hmm. Um, some literature that had a similar description uh, to the vampire that they would have had access to, however, was the Bible. I uh, mean, like, let's be real: the Bible has so much worse shit in it than like most things that kids could be exposed to. Yeah, and, and, like, and, yeah, there's a lot of sh- a lot of shit in the Bible. <laughs> Um, and it's the book like, itself has some interesting history behind it. I'll leave it to everyone to look up the long version of themselves. But other than being the best-selling Bible contributing to Penguin Publishing House's $3.3 billion earnings, um, since they own the, the Crown Publishing, who has the sole uh, co- uh, um, copyright to the King James Bible, the King James Version was a rewrite or retranslation of... The, the older Bible at the time, commissioned by King James himself because he got tired of religious people uh, talking shit about him because he was openly gay. So he had the Bible rewritten to be uh, more well, accepting of his lifestyle. Was he was he openly gay or was he like openly open secret gay? He he would bring his his cause he would bring his like male lover to like parties openly, like it wasn't a secret. <laughs> And people, like, and he got tired of like people talking shit. So he he had the Bible rewritten so people would stop talking shit about him having uh, with his dude friend. Really? <laughs> I didn't hear. I didn't know about this. Yeah, you can like this is the the overly abbreviated you know one paragraph of that story. So there, there's a lot more that goes into it. Um. But the line itself that's of interest in the vampire story is Daniel 7-7 seven, seven, uh, that reads, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. It had great iron teeth, and devoured uh, and broke into pieces. It stamped the residue with its feet, and it was diverse from all the other beasts before it, and it had horns and, you know, whatever. Um, the iron tooth monster is also nothing new to Scottish folklore. Uh, according to Tam Smith, parents sometimes warned their badly behaved offspring of that, quote, Iron Man, a local ogre who would get them. Um, another monster, and this one came from the 1800s, was... <laughs> We're going to get DMC-8, that's too accurate. I know. Uh, another monster from the 1800s was... Jenny Wee Iron Teeth, or uh, uh, Jenny with the Iron Teeth. Uh, and she was a witch that roamed Glasgow and had a pension for eating children who wouldn't go to bed. Part of a nice poem for the kids uh, that tr- their parents would read to them before bed was, Jenny with the Iron Teeth, come and take the bairn, which is Scottish for child. Take him to your den where the bo- where the bogey bides, which is the bogan My or bogey man. lives. Um... Uh, but put both both your big teeth in his wee plump sides. So they're, they're like, if you don't get up, there's murder a poem. Yeah, come murder my kid because they won't sleep. Is the poem you read before they sleep? Um, yeah, it's it's basically, hey, hey, listen, I want you to fucking kill my kid. Yeah, it's, <laughs> and that's no way to do it. What you really do is you, um, you don't say it in front of them. You you rub liquor into their gums the same way. <laughs> People try to get the last bit of coke out of a bag. Woo, mm-hmm. parenting really evolved. <laughs> um, Did it, though? No. no. <laughs> Did it, though? Because, like, people are still pouring bleach up their kids' assholes. So, like... Dad, oh, that's a thing. Yeah, it's it's explicitly a thing. It's super depressing. Yeah. <laughs> this has been this has been your moment of depression, everyone. I hope you There's, you We're your bi-weekly moment of depression. Um... It's been suggested that the vampire was born from the telling of these stories for over a hundred years. Uh, to the you don't f- say. Yeah, I don't say. Like these iron teeth monsters from our folklore, clearly has nothing. Isn't the problem? It's these American comic books. Fucking um, Americans, we ruin. Fucking Amer- We we really find a way to do things, don't Although we? Although we actually we actually really do ruin a lot. Oh yeah, um, it's. <laughs> like, uh, like, yeah, we do so a lot of bad stuff. Yeah, we're pretty great. Uh, we're pretty bad. We're pretty bad. 
Yeah, so 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 these stories uh, it, that have been in the 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 zeitgeist for a hundred years, combined with the quote magical realist world of children that that children live in, um, having no open public spaces and forcing them to play in a necropolis, and the poverty and the dicks and blazes, which is the ironworks that border the necropolis. The vampire came out of like this blurred line of imagination and reality that children just live in because that's how play works. I don't know what you're talking about, Brandon. I really That's don't. how play works. <laughs> Brandon, I am I I've never heard of any of this and I have a masters in game design. This is this is complete bullshit. I don't believe <laughs> you. This so is you're saying it wrong. It was the comic books. Okay. I yeah, stand corrected. Books. This this is just that's just not how play works, Brandon. That's and if you no. if you can't tell that I'm like doing this through my teeth, like I'm I, I'm saying this through my teeth. This is not this is not serious. <laughs> I like I, I can't articulate how non serious that just was. <laughs> Just want to. Uh, I just want to get ahead of that. Like, I don't want anyone to say anything. Like, I don't want anyone to accuse me of being dumb on that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's a risk. <laughs> um. So, but whatever the origin, on September twenty fourth, three days after the first event, um, the Sunday Mail published an article quote: "Vampire with iron teeth is dead," claiming that. Now the children who had been armed and flooding the streets now laugh at the idea of a vampire. <laughs> sounds like kids. It sounds like it was just a fad. Yeah, like it was clearly kids playing at the only place they can play for a few days. Like it's the, it's the lightsaber thing. Like it this really is. There's, I know that's an incredible. Like there's. That's the most, I imagine, specific thing to us, but that's also the best way I can, like, it, think of this, it, is it's the it lightsaber kinda, thing. It kind of is the lightsaber like, thing. Like, they went on the vampire hunt, and to be honest, it's it probably a lot fun. safer than, uh, even though they were armed, than some of the other games that kids were playing in school, which was Dodge Rock, where it was a dodgeball with rocks. I mean, people got <laughs> hurt. <laughs> <laughs> what you playing? Rocks. That was What's basically. Rocks? <laughs> we just throw rocks, and you got to try to not get hit by the rock. Oh, that sounds normal. I'll continue on, kids. That's to be fair. They left a large pile of rocks. <laughs> like, they were asking for it. Like, they were asking, they were asking for, for the kids. They needed. A, they needed to thin the kids' numbers down a little. Bit. That's I'm totally they, they were, to be honest. That's why they did it. We were getting too strong. Mm -hmm. They had. To, they had to thin us out with the rocks. Us? We? What is all yeah. this? Yeah. Or, or that time they had a bunch of police show up because they heard there was going to be a food fight. Or like, you know, wait, did that happen? Yeah, they had, they had a bunch of cops show up with guns, like, because there was going to be a, a food fight. And I was like, I feel like the risk of what? mashed potatoes being thrown, like... Like, I feel like fewer kids would be hurt by potatoes than cops trying to restrain kids because they have potatoes. I didn't know that happened. Yeah. Really? What? Yeah. Uh, once there, again, was like an, there was, like, an announcement on the PA system, even. Oh, I kind of remember that now. Like, because they announced, like, we... I forget what exactly it was, but, like, we something... We heard the... Whatever about a food fight tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. And we're bringing in the police or whatever. And, like, it's... Uh, what, are you, what are you doing? Our school was... Was full of narcs. It was filled with narcs. Well, actually, no. <laughs> and, and animals. Here's the thing. It Actual filled, animals. It was filled with narcs, but, like, also nobody reported the people who were actually problematic. Yeah. Because there were some people who were actually problematic. Oh, very much so. I think you're thinking. I I don't know if you're thinking of the same person I'm thinking, but I remember one one professor, one professor, one teacher, who um definitely had teenage girls come into his room every day. Yep. And, like <laughs> sit on him. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying that existed. Yeah. But the real problem is the, the risk of potatoes, John. Mm -hmm. The uh, potatoes are the real problem. Like, like <laughs> or, kids being 
kids being I, kids is the real threat, not not a potential, uh, you know, thing. Yeah. Although I did enjoy that if you go went to the elevator, there's a non-zero chance there is a giant snake in it. It's true. Or a turtle. Well, that was high school. I was talking about middle school. Oh yeah, true. I think middle school is when the when the thing got stopped, if my memory is correct. Is when the thing got stopped? The 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 fight, like the food fight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, high school is, is with the animals. And then middle school is with the <laughs> other stuff. Well, middle school is with the rocks and the lightsabers and the kids selling porn and Pokemon cards. Do you remember I guess that? I was I was never well. I was ne- I remember kids selling Pokemon cards, but I was never like I was too. No one would ever sell porn to me because I was uh, I was gotcha. kind of a narc. There was a thing that um like kids were they were t- meticulously. Like with, I imagine, an exacto cutting out the picture frame from Pokemon cards, but leaving the back intact, just the front lamination, Wait. and then and then getting porn magazines and finding pictures that would fit inside of that, and cutting those out in a square that would fit, and replacing basically the Pokemon artwork with porn from magazines, and they would have a deck of Pokemon cards, or to teachers it would look like a regular deck of Pokemon cards, but you could buy from these kids. Porn in Pokemon. What? Cards. Yeah, I didn't know about that at all. Yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> all right. Well, we're we're at the end of the episode because we're getting hyper specific, and that's how you know. That that's how you know. That's pretty much how you know. Um, I can't believe next episode is going to be a hundred. Next episode's a hundred. We're we're breaking three years. It's a thing. I don't know what to say about this. There's, I don't know either, other than, um, I don't know. We, we, we can't do any more than 199 episodes, though, because I forgot how I made the zebra stripes on the Google Sheet, so it's easier to read the spreadsheet. <laughs> That's it. That's the hard limit for Cryptopedia. 199. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way for me to go in and like find where I put that formula because you can't just do zebra stripes like you can in Excel like you you have to like do code stuff (laughs) (laughs) I'm 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 starting to overheat a little bit too because it's warm in this room my house Mm -hmm. Um, right. And I have the head, I have the headphones on, so like it's heating my ears up. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so I'm getting a little loopy at this point. Um, good. All right. Well, so let's just do our plugs. Um, our website is cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. So is our Twitter. Our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Yep. Um, we'll thank mm. our Patreons. Well, our Jackalopes specifically. We'll thank yeah. Clay. Oh, I have to hit tab. Hang on. I have- Boop, there we go. Formatting fixed. We'll thank Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and Matthew Smith. Also, Matthew I'm going to say Matthew Smith. I like the spelling of your name. It's with a Y. There's a Y in there. Not to blow up your spot, but I like that. I mean, I think that's visible on the Patreon. I'm not sure, though. Um, I don't know. We have a Facebook group I don't pay attention to. Um, We have a Discord that people keep joining and then immediately leaving. So if you're going to join our Discord, but then go, nope, um, tell it before you leave. Just say, I'm leaving. Be- we want to know why. Yeah. Is tell it us because why of all leaving. the cursed channels? There's a lot of cursed. There's a blessed channel, though. So, like, just like, you know, there's a blessed channel. There's a blessed yeah, channel. Just just let, let, let us know. Let us know. Like, like, you know, there's some blessed stuff happening here. We've got some, we got some dragons, which is basically become Godzilla stuff. Like, like, treat us, what would be, like, like the respectful way if, like, you go on one date with somebody and you go, I, I'm really not into it, you don't want to see them again. Mm-hmm. Do the nice thing and just, like, be like, I, be like, I, you know, it's, I'm just gonna, I'm not interested. But also, here's why. You like horses too much. Something. Mm-hmm. Give us something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, we can't grow if you don't tell us how much we like horses. We can't because 
I, I think that's the takeaway from what you were trying, what you're saying there. I'm not sure. I kind of zoned out halfway through, so I think that's it. But rippling muscles, rippling muscles, equine beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of those horses that have that like jacked disease, and they're like just pure muscle, just diesel horses. <laughs> yeah, pure like absolute diesel. Oh yeah. man. Uh, um, also, yeah. rate, review, also, subscribe, monster stuff. If you if you uh, if you tell us why you're leaving, I'll let you. I'll let I'll let you look at the Himbo Brands Anonymous chat for like a second. Oh. Unlock the locked chat temp. Oh yeah, that. If we oh, get, that. if we get, if we get, if, if we have ten people, I'll let people look at the chat. Oh, I just remembered what I put in that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's a nightmare. It's the only not safe for work channel on the on the the in the Discord, and only Brandon and I have access to it. So. Yeah, that's that's. There's cursed, and then there's like, there's Himbo just, Brandon on us. Just pour gasoline on your computer. Yeah, um, pretty much. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com, and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. I'm on Instagram at me2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at thomasmichaelhill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommichael at gmail.com. As always, things are going to get weird. And I said that wrong. <laughs> I'm John. <laughs> I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs>